What's going on sixpackabs.com? It's Thomas DeLauer. Today I want to help you understand that lactic acid is not the enemy. There's a common misconception that lactic acid is what's making you get sore, what's making it hard for you to work out, and what is ruining your workouts altogether. Hey, if you haven't already, I wanna make sure that you check out my science-based six-pack intermittent fasting program that's down below in the description. It includes all of my workouts, but also includes my fasting strategy, including how to break a fast and how to start a fast. So that's down in the description, but for now, let's talk about some science. So lactic acid is a pretty simple compound when we really break it down. We have different kinds of metabolism in the body when it comes down to creating energy. We have aerobic and anaerobic. And through those processes, we have something known as pyruvate. Pyruvate is a particular component of creating energy within the body. But when we're working hard, pyruvate eventually gets converted into what is called lactate, hence lactic acid. You create lactate. Now lactate is very acidic, but what a lot of people don't fully get is that lactate eventually enters back through a cycle and becomes energy again. In fact, what they've found is that lactic acid, which is supposed to be the thing that makes us all sore and in pain and all that, is actually converted into more energy than it is converted into waste. In fact, 75% of the lactic acid that you create from exercise ends up getting reconverted back into glucose for you to use as energy. So as long as your system is running properly and you're breathing right and you're expelling the proper waste and breathing in and getting the right amount of oxygen in, you're going to recycle that lactate through that lactate system and create more energy. So there are some studies that took a look at this and they found that people that were generating a lot of lactic acid through workouts weren't more likely to have delayed onset muscle soreness than those that didn't create more lactic acid. So what that means is when you take two groups of individuals, one that is working out at a specific kind of intensity that's gonna generate a lot of lactic acid, and another group that's working at an entirely different kind of intensity, it didn't have a line item correlation with who got more sore. So meaning the lactic acid does not contribute to delayed onset muscle soreness. And what about when we're actually working out? What's causing the burn? We used to think that when you were working out and you were feeling the burn in a given muscle, that it was because of the lactic acid and you were feeling that acid burning. Well, that's not quite the case. In fact, what they're finding now is that when you work out, you create these excess hydrogen atoms. And these two excess hydrogen atoms, before they get converted into lactic acid, are actually what create the acidic environment within your muscle that causes you to fatigue. You see, once that hydrogen gets converted into lactic acid, it actually becomes beneficial and it can actually delay fatigue. See, the body can actually process this lactic acid in some ways even easier than it can process glucose because it's already entered into that system. So believe it or not, it can actually allow you to push it a little bit further. You're getting extra energy. So imagine having 100 units of glucose, okay? You start to burn them for energy, and then your body takes some of that and converts it into lactic acid as a waste product. But then 75% of that waste product is reconverted back into glucose. So glucose has these additional cycles that allows you to get more energy from them. So that burn that you're feeling is actually just a simple byproduct of hydrogen being extracted or being removed from the equation. It's not the lactic acid itself. So what are you getting from this video other than some interesting science and maybe a little education? Well, the fact is you don't need to be training to a specific burn all the time. That's what the science is starting to show. In fact, starting to show that proper periodization is more important than anything. Just the right duration, the right intensity, the right frequency, the right volume, but not always training to failure and getting that burn. Chasing the burn is only going to create more lactic acid. It's not going to mean that you're going to get stronger, and it doesn't mean that you're going to get more sore. You might be better off lifting a little bit heavier, or you might be better off lifting a little bit lighter. You want to lift in the way that you're going to allow yourself to recover the most, because recovery is where you actually gain the strength and gain the actual stamina and endurance and power that you're looking for. So I no longer want you to think about the burn. I want you to focus on your heart rate, I want to focus on how much you're sweating, and I want you to focus on keeping periodized. Keep on a regiment, keep on a structure, and work out consistently so that you can make sure that you're constantly looking at the data and improving your physique that way rather than solely relying on the burn. There are many situations that might allow you to feel more of a burn on one day than you would on another. 
We have hormones to factor in. We have acidity levels within the blood and the saliva and all that that we have to factor in at specific points in time. All these different things make a difference, and they have nothing to do with the micro trauma that you are inflicting upon your muscles to actually get them to grow. So there's another myth busted. As always, keep it locked in here on sixpackabs.com, and I will see you in the next video.